the actors that you worked with, uh, people like Grace Kelly, James Dean, Mike Wallace, Jack Lemmon, Steve Allen, and others, um, how did they, did they have difficulties adapting as actors to television? And what was it like working with them? Anything that stands out that you want to share with us? They loved, they loved it only because it was a living and, and, a, and a very nice one. Uh, you know, I mean, just our little factory of uh, danger and you are there, if we used you six times a year, it would be hard to use you more because then you'd start getting too familiar, uh, it could pay your nut. That could take care of your rent for the year. And that's just our two shows. There were a lot of other shows, as you know. And we were, we were half-hour shows. The hour shows paid even better. So the only difficulty that anyone had, and it took a, lo a little time to uh, overcome this, all of them, from either their theater training or in the few movies that they had done, had of course, in the theater training, there was no looking at a camera. But in the movie training, the one thing you never did was that. You never looked into the lens. We evolved this style on You Are There where the camera was the interrogator, was the correspondent. Uh, we didn't f hit our stride till about the fourth or fifth show. Uh, at the beginning, I'm embarrassed to say, we played around with, we put the correspondents in costume. We never showed them. Uh, oh, for, for, the, those, for the audience that doesn't know about this, You Are There was a show in which historical incidents were recreated being covered, covered by modern news techniques. In other words, network correspondents are present and, uh, and uh, tell me, Julius Caesar, hasn't it been a bad day in the Senate? Uh, that, that kind of thing. So at the beginning, uh, for Julius Caesar, uh, we played around with Harry Reasoner or Mike Wallace, or a shoulder, just the feeling of a toga, and the arm and the microphone out there. Well, that was rapidly be became ludicrous. Uh, dropped that idea after the first show, and then tried them in modern dress, performing the same function. Again, an anachronism, because uh, tell me, Joan, was the fire hot? Uh, with a with a modern over a modern shoulder, again wasn't workable. Finally, by about the fourth show, I think one of the writers came up with this technique. I didn't think of it. I wish I had, which was that the camera was the uh, interrogator, was the correspondent, and we always the interview always began with a fresh cut. In other words, if you and I were on a two shot. Uh, as part of the drama of conversation between us, when Mike Wallace came in, oh, Julius Caesar, and I would turn to Mike Wallace to a on a separate cut to its own camera. The problem for the actor was that we kept trying to get the correspondents to be as close to the camera as possible so that their eye line wouldn't be troubled. Uh, and we found that at the beginning, the first time anybody was ever on the show and had to talk into the lens, they almost invariably dried up. They almost invariably lost their concentration mm -hmm. and forgot their lines. Because it was such a violation <coughs> of everything that they'd be taught, that they had been taught, that their concentration wandered. James Dean, any, what was it like working with him? It was wonderful. We did a, uh, we did, I did two shows. with. Uh, Jimmy, we did a danger, and I don't remember what that was about. Uh, the You Are There that we did was a terrific show in which he played, uh, it was the death of Jesse James, and he played the wicked Bob Ford who shot Jesse in the back. Uh, or, and he had all that kind of sultry, Jimmy Dean, not quite looking at you. Sulkiness, and it was great for Bob Ford.